Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. We recently bought Boss Industrial's 16-ton dual-action electric log splitter. It's the model number ED16T21. We had a good experience getting it here. We're gonna show the unboxing, the assembly, putting it to use, and what we love, and some things we think they could have done differently. Hey, stay tuned. We'll tell you all about it. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. We love this new log splitter simply because it's allowing us to produce a lot of firewood for our wood-fired heat unit here in the shop. And it gets pretty cold where we live, so having a good supply of logs, and we have a great source of hardwood logs that are brought to us, but we needed a way to split it up. And after a lot of research and wanting to go the electric route versus gas-fired uh, or gas-powered, what we ended up doing was getting Boss Industrial's dual action electric log splitter. And when we say dual action, it splits both ways between two uh, pressure plates. It exerts 16 tons of pressure when it does so. And we got the size that actually has large, uh, large enough uh, tires on it that it is towable, which makes it really nice to move around both in the neighborhood, off-road, and on our property as well. There's gonna be four sections to this video. One, we're gonna show you the delivery and unboxing. Number two, we're gonna show you the assembly, putting it together, and we'll um, aspire to move through that pretty quickly, but giving you enough detail and referencing back to this uh, reference manual, which is a pretty doggone ma good manual, uh, showing you how to put it together so you know what you're getting into if you get one of these. Number three, we're gonna go ahead and put it in use briefly and you can just see it uh, working back and forth through some of the different kinds of wood here, whether it's pine or conifer, or we get a lot of Chinese elm, which is very interlaced. And you can kind of see the difference when it does that. And then fourth, we're just gonna give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. What do we like about it? Uh, what, did they, uh, what have they got on this you think could have been differently? What are some things that we're gonna do to enhance productivity and that sort of thing? So. If you'd like, jump forward at any time. And if you're interested in any of this piece of equipment, you can certainly go to boss-industrial, www.boss-industrial.com to look up their lineup. Uh, we got the 16 ton, which is just, it's not, uh, it's kind of mid-range, it's semi-industrial, um, and does allow you to use a four-way uh, splitter wedge if you need to, but if you went lower than that in tonnage, you probably wouldn't want to use that four-way splitter. But let's go ahead and begin. Well, we had ordered the unit, and at about, oh, 10 days, uh, seven to 10 days, I forget, somewhere in there, reasonable amount of time, uh, the truck showed up and backed up our driveway, and the friendly driver got out named Mike and rolled uh, using liftgate delivery, which we requested, and they recommend strongly because uh, it's several hundred pounds, so I say that low hundreds, maybe 300 or 400 pounds, but not something you just want to drag around. And so he put it on the pallet jack, brought it down the lift gate, rolled it into place. And I got to tell you, this is one of the best packing jobs I have ever seen. Steel angle, painted, bolted together to make sure the package is um, shipped safely with a cardboard liner, and it's on a plywood base with some packing blocks. Uh, it was well done. So the first thing we need to do is start taking off the side braces uh, and then eventually take off the bolts that held, uh, retained the top end. And then after that disassembly, uh, we went ahead and took off the crate top frame, lifted that out. Now you had four corners sitting up uh, vertical. We went ahead and removed those. And that got us down to where we could actually open the box, which is kind of a bottomless box uh, down around the cart, uh, excuse me, the plywood base, but uh, taped shut on the top. So Dirt Farmer Maggie went ahead and sliced it open. We opened it back up and in the box, uh, things are packaged very nice, foam wrapped. Uh, they've obviously thought this through really well. And in fact, when you look in the manual, they actually show, and I have to get to the page here, the packing manual about how it's packed and how to undo it. So this is standard operating procedure for them, how it comes to you. Once we got uh, the box opened 
and the sleeve removed off of it, now you can see some of the components that are in there. We start removing like where the tires and the motor box and the parts box and all that. And we got down to some of the main components, which include uh, the reservoir, the main beam, uh, the spine, if you will. And here you can see uh, the motor off on the side of the box packed separately, and it's really heavy. So uh, then what we next needed to do was just figure out what tools we needed. And that is listed right here in the manual of the list of items. And uh, I'll read them to you very quickly, just in case you're interested. And they're listed down below in the description as well. You're gonna need two 13 millimeter wrenches, uh, a 16, 17, 18, and 27 millimeter wrench. Now 27 millimeters, a pretty big wrench, like one and a quarter or something like that. So um, I used a big crescent wrench. You're gonna need a six millimeter Allen wrench, uh, one big crescent or adjustable wrench, needle nose pliers, a flathead screwdriver, a soft face hammer that's used essentially to line items, but also to put the bearing caps on the wheels and then some thread locking compound to keep things secure. And that's all listed in the manual itself, but also you can look down if you're just contemplating this or preparing, uh, you can look in the description below. All right, so once we had that, we went ahead and laid out all of the components. And here they are, just so you can see what's there to get organized, have our magnetized dishes, our tools all ready to go, and then we got to work. All right, to get started, the first thing that needs to be done, and this is all lined, outlined step by step in the manual, so we're just following the steps of the manual, is that you need to attach the uh, trailer tongue assembly uh, to the main beam or the spine of the machine. So the first thing you need to do is um, go ahead and bring down the stand portion uh, to get it out of the way where the bolts need to go through. So you uh, move that down, pull out a pin, reinsert it, resecure it. And then you need to determine the bolts, see where the bolts are on the spine, uh, get those bolts out and loose, and then line up um, the spine or the, yeah, the spine of the machine, the main beam uh, in line with the tongue of the trailer or trailer tongue, slide it in and then start inserting the bolts. And it's a little tricky, but you got to get from both sides uh, and then really secure them. They're good lock nuts. They look like they're heavy duty fasteners. And if you like, go ahead and put some lock compound on them because the machine is going to vibrate. It'll probably be outside quite a bit. So uh, you work through that process and now you have a subassembly of the main spine along with the uh, tongue of the unit with the hitch unit on the top. And now you're ready to go to the next section which is working on the back side of the machine or the tail, and that's attaching the reservoir. Now, as you can see here, uh, we use some of the frame or the crate as a handy little work table uh, or one of the wagons that we had. And so that really worked out very well. And what that allowed us to do was to lay the beam with the trailer tongue um, across and then using a floor jack, raise the reservoir into place and align all the bolts. Now, one of the things I wanna mention there is the bolts that you need to use to attach. And I'm pointing them out here because there are three bolts on each side, but you don't use the ones nearest the end. Those are part of the main unit. You don't undo those. It's the four two bolts on each side that are removed and then the brackets from the reservoir, the um, hydraulic oil reservoir, and combined axle unit all gets tied to that. It's fairly heavy. Um, it's hard to keep balance. It wasn't fair to ask Dirt Farmer Maggie, okay, come on, lift harder. How long, what's the matter? Uh, we just let the floor jack and maybe you've got other ways to do it. Blocking, concrete block, uh, a bunch of neighbors, something like that to raise it up in place and then insert the bolts and then tighten them all in place. So once that is all installed and tightened in. Now you're ready to install uh, the wheels. And here uh, they come in a nice pack, all of the hardware with it, the accessories, the bearing covers, all there. So we got that out. Uh, and then the next thing you do is ready the tires for installation. So they have protectors 
that are pressed in uh, over the bearings and they're a little bit hard to get out. I tried to pry them out. Finally, what I end up doing is utility knife and slicing them on the side and then popping them off, being careful not to dislodge the bearings and get grit in the bearings and the grease because they are pre-greased. So then you go ahead and slide those on. We still had the unit on top of the jack. We slid those on on both sides and then utilizing the instructions on how to tension and tighten and seat the bearings, we installed the castle nuts and then um, the cotter pins to hold the castle nuts in place. And then finally, we went ahead and installed uh, the, the wheel bearing covers, tapping them in with a soft faced hammer. Okay, things are moving along pretty nicely now. So uh, you actually have a unit that you can roll around because the tires are installed, uh, the, the trailer tongue with uh, the stand is all installed. So now uh, things are not nearly as precarious. You can get rid of the jack stand. And now comes time to put on the motor with the hydraulic pump. Uh, it's fairly heavy. I think it's really well made. It's machined nicely. It's a nice looking unit. Uh, the fit and finish is really nice on it, but you need to install it using the bolts uh, that are indicated in the manual and are pretty intuitive. Uh, those, because they are going to have a lot of vibration, even though there's lock fasteners and all that on it, I just always use um, thread locking compound on these types of things for insurance. So go ahead and get that all mounted and lined up. As is good practice when you're putting time, this kind of machinery together, I don't tighten one bolt down. I tighten them all just a finger tight to get the motor aligned and so you can get all the holes aligned, keep them loose. And then when you've got all the bolts in and started and the nuts started nicely and all that, then you can tighten them up in a cross pattern tightening uh, fashion so you're not distorting the plates and all that sort of thing. It's now time to install the hydraulic hoses that are going to transfer around the hydraulic fluid uh, from this high pressure pump on the motor that's going to operate the unit. And what we did, because the hoses are very stiff, they're very substantial, and we were installing this on a cool late winter day, they were really stiff and hard to manipulate around. So we unfastened some of the factory installed couplings, uh, didn't reverse position or anything, but just made it easier to get the others started and then move them back into position. So uh, you're going to need to do, there are six fittings total, three hoses, two on one side on the pump side. Uh, and you'll see in the, uh, in the uh, manual, there's a whole diagram that points this out just showed, showing that on uh, the left side, you have two, two hoses, uh, both attached to the inlet and outlet side of the pump on the motor. And then on the other side, uh, you have the um, connector to the uptake that is in the reservoir where all the, the fluid is going to be. So all those need to be torqued down per the specification, per the direction here, make sure they're sealed well. And of course, after you start up the unit and operate it, you want to look and make sure that you don't have any leaks that develop. Okay, now um, there is no fluid in the unit when it's shipped other than what they tested it with. And so what you want to make sure, uh, do not operate this unit without the oil. You will void your warranty and screw up your nice, beautiful machine. So we'll get to that in a moment, what to use. Uh, the last thing you need to do now is install the log trays that go to both sides of the main beam. And this is pretty straightforward. There are a set of plates on both sides of the main beam that are tapped, ready to accept the bolts. Um, pretty intuitive. Uh, you place those on both sides so they're running parallel to the direction of the ram as it runs back and forth in the wedge. So uh, those are installed. And now you've got this and the machine is ready to fill with uh, the right fluid. Now this gets a little iffy. And when we got, uh, we went to multiple uh, supplies, both agricultural supplies and um, automotive stores to find the exact thing. And we could not find exactly what was stated in uh, this manual. Uh, finally, we settled on what's called an ISO 46 fluid, uh, and it was designated specific for hydraulic log splitters. And that's what we've been using. It's a moderate viscosity. Uh, and is everything seems to be running beautifully. The machine sounds great. We don't have it doing any weird sounds or underperforming or anything like that. It's just doing what it should be doing. But the information on that is included in here. But again, I'm just going to say it. 
just be careful. Don't run your machine until it's filled up. And then once it's filled up, you need to cycle the machine back and forth about 20 times with no load to get everything, um, all the fluid throughout the system and burp out the air, so to speak, uh, so that you've bled the system. And the only thing that's remaining is hydraulic fluid, which can properly exert the pressures it needs to. So once you're at that stage, we found this machine was really easy to roll out it's a nice looking machine. We're going to have a tarp system to keep it covered uh, and to roll it in in uh, poor weather and keep it stored very well. But what we really like about this electric machine, either it runs or it doesn't. It isn't, you know, you don't have to get a carburetor and, and oil changes that way. Uh, maintenance ongoing, you do need to change out the hydraulic oil um, and they recommend a maintenance uh, cycle of approximately every year. Um, you can look that up in here, and that's what we'll do is at the end of every season, we'll drain that oil out uh, after we've put it to work, install new oil, put it away for the winter, and then start the fun all over again um, once the spring hits, or we'll probably do some splitting also in the late fall. Uh, right now, it is the early days, first couple days of spring. So that is coming along here. Um, I got to tell you, splitting wood is a lot of fun. So. You can see me running the cycle here, but uh, here is, uh, you can just see a, a little still photo here that I took when I got this set up and I went out there. And I gotta tell you, it's kind of addictive because when you start splitting, you don't wanna stop. And here's just about, oh, five, 10 minutes worth of splitting some shorts to begin with, short bucks of wood. And uh, kind of at the end of the late of the day, you can see the golden sunshine there and it was really fun. So those, uh, that's been the unboxing, that's been the assembling, that's showing you the machine in operation. We really like the fact that you don't have to uh, wait for it to cycle back before you can put the, another log in. When it comes to rest at one end, now you put a log on this side and you plow back through uh, and you do that. So I really like that. The control handle is well placed. Uh, where you stand as an operator is easy to work with. Um, so that kind of thing, how well it runs, how fast it splits, all of that, the fit and finish, how substantial it feels for this model, they're all pluses. So what didn't we like or what are we a little concerned about? Well, the one thing I don't like is the log trays seem to be a little undersized and they seem to be a little light gauge. And just after using it for a couple weeks, I noticed one of them is dented. Um, probably I slammed down a log or too heavy a log on it, um, but they seem to be a little undersized and if you've got a sizable buck that you're putting through, there doesn't enough room to set it well. Um, I, uh, I like the height that it's at, but I'm probably going to put an in-feed table of some kind where you can preload a bunch of logs and then put all the splits and that way shove them down to where they're going to go in a... Uh, storage unit, uh, probably do some of that, but the, those tables seem to be a little bit light. Um, there's a little bit of the other thing I would say, just a little bit of confusion in the manual, a couple places that seem to be contradictory or uh, the page numbers where it tells you to go look up something's off a couple pages. Minor stuff that you can just get figured out. I'd say overall, so far we're really pleased with this. Um, one other thing I will notice is that because it is easy somewhat to maneuver around, sometimes when you're kind of pushing sideways or moving a little bit, it'll tend to scoot on you a little bit, but I've already developed muscle memory to kind of overcome that. I think we're going to be very pleased with this. Uh, I anticipate we will be, but in all honesty, these are just our initial impressions. We'll come back to you in a year after we've used it through the both seasons of uh, early spring and again in late fall and let you know how it's holding up if it, we still love it or if we think there's some problems developing and that way you can continue to look there. I think you're going to really enjoy it. You know another thing that everybody needs if they're processing firewood? Well check out this video that we produced where you can get a pick -a -roon. Some people call it a hook -a too. There's a real uh, argument out there about what unit is but whatever it is it allows you to pick up the logs with a handle and swing it in and pick up a log so you don't have to bend over every time. And check out this other video that YouTube thinks is perfect for your interest from our catalog, and we'd like it if you watch it too. As for me, 
I'm going out to splint some more wood. Whoop!